Hello guys and welcome to the Nürburgring. We have a very special guest, Kelvin van der Linde. How's it going, man? All good, all good. Can you tell the audience people that maybe don't follow endurance racing so much what, what you're up to and what you're doing currently sort of thing? So uh, at the moment I'm an Audi Sport factory driver uh, for Audi. I have been for the last three years. Basically all the big endurance races like Nürburgring where we are today and uh, Spa 24, uh, that's kind of my, my day job. So it's, I can't be a It's pretty cool, isn't it? And we're actually here at the Nürburgring 24 hours. Sure during the race. So Kelvin has gone in, done a two hour stint, yeah. and now just got suited and booted again, and it's just, just chilling just for a Just chilling while. with you guys. So what do you do during a 24 hour race? You know, it's like you messaged me before you came here, and you were like, dude, yeah, when is the right time to come over? <laughs> Are you sleeping, or will we disturb you? Yeah, that's why I assume. And, I, like, and I feel like sleeping. racing drivers, they try and talk it all up. Uh, you know, we're actually, we're easy going guys. In the middle of the night, we'll probably be in the, in the truck, Telling each other jokes yeah, at two in the morning, you know, <laughs> not sleeping, you not know, having a farting contest like I told you. You know what I mean? Let's farting like, competitions at three. You know, it's not. We'll uh, it's not everybody tries to say, oh, you know, we're so busy, we don't have one minute of time because we don't have that much stress like the F1 drivers. I mean, I guess they have a bit more commitments and stuff. We obviously have our, our fair share, but it's much more relaxed and, and you really get to focus a lot more on the driving aspect. So what's your plan from, from now till the end of the race, I suppose? I um, I think now the race is starting to settle into its into its rhythm. The first two hours are normally the most intense because the cars are obviously close together. Um, everybody's trying to race each other for track position. But now the cars are starting to split up. Strategy will become a bit more of an important factor. So now the drivers start to settle into the rhythm, try to keep the lap times consistent. That's the main thing. It's not so much, you know, uh, combat between the cars. Um, so right now I'm trying to get some rest. I'll probably grab a massage, you know, just flush out all the fatigue. But where are these you know? massages? <laughs> Hey, don't complain. You guys got a TTRS <laughs> for this event, man. That's true. You were very angry about that. <laughs> Massages are not the only thing Kelvin had to worry about during the race. In fact, he was doing his job twice. He was literally racing in two different cars. And two different cars means two different team briefings, two different car setups, and even two different pit stop procedures to learn too. Things that may seem small on their own, but tricky to manage all at the same time. It doesn't end there either. With Kelvin winning the race last year, it meant he was a big time baller coming into this race with more media demands. And with more media demands, it meant less time being able to do the behind the scenes work and soak up all the data. The life of a racing driver, eh? And fitness regime. Is it, I guess it's not as strict as Formula One, but I guess it's something that helps your performance, especially over a 24 hour race when you need to have that stamina. Um, yeah, for sure. The, the stamina is one thing. And also, uh, we don't have a minimum weight for the drive. We only have a minimum weight for the car. So, I mean, if you're 20 kilos heavier than your teammate, it's difficult to make up that deficit as a driver. So what happened there? What my was, my mate that? Marcus Winkelock had a bit of a touch with the barrier in the midnight. <laughs> oh, God. And he slipped under the radar. Nobody really saw it. And they were like, where'd that damage come from? <laughs> and nobody knew what was going on. And then in the, off the race, we watched the highlights. We thought, Marcus, what the hell was that all about? <laughs> nobody saw that and you didn't say anything. Well, did he get a, a swapper on or something? Yeah, a little bit, touched the barrier, but kept going, luckily. Just so, didn't tell anyone. No, it's fine, it's fine, it's <laughs> fine. In general, the GT3 cars have pretty much become high downforce race cars. And you actually, it's, uh, we're so dependent nowadays on, on downforce. We've got the big rear wings, we've got the flicks on the front. So any little bit of damage, it affects your performance. And they really are, you know, I would say close to some, I would say a Formula Renault or, you know, halfway yeah. between a Formula Renault 2 litre and a Formula 3 car. Obviously it's just quite heavy. It's 1,200 kilograms, but it has a bit of, a bit more horsepower. So it's got about 500 horsepower. Yeah. So that keeps us busy behind the wheel. We actually did a video last year comparing this to a road car. Uh, has much changed for this year or is it pretty much the same? same pretty much the specs? same. We're expecting a, an Evo kit coming next year. So that'll be a new aero kit, just updating, you know, making some, some small changes that we, you know, would like. I guess drivers or whatever. Uh, let's have a look actually inside the car a little bit as well. Can you open it up? Does it open? Is it locked? It's locked. Damn it! It's fine. We'll, we'll uh, cut to we'll a... put this in the bloopers. Yeah. I'm putting you on the spot now, so uh, I'm sure you have many, uh, many yeah, a terrible well, secret. Actually, uh, three, three years ago, we actually, me and my, one of my friends, we came to the race. Three years ago, I didn't get the, you know, the gig to drive at the Nürburgring because I was still 18 years old at the time. Yeah. So me and my buddy, we brought our camp camping chairs and we camped, we camped next to the track. It was one of the mechanics at the time and I remember his wife packed for him like a, a little sandwich and everything and me and my mate, we like totally in dream world, you know. <laughs> so we get to the camping place, whatever, we're chilling out in the middle of the night. Eventually me and my mate, we're like super hungry and this guy, we see his sandwich and we start <laughs> digging in his sandwiches while he's sleeping. <laughs> He wakes up like half an hour later and says, dude, what happened to my sandwich? He literally had nothing left. So he's sitting there, you know, just nothing to eat, all hungry. And we're like, 
<laughs> Loving it, man. We next to race, uh, race fans, one. we got our beers, all good. So you've actually seen the, the atmosphere because something that maybe a lot of people don't understand about the N24 is the atmosphere, the camping and the people building the, sh yeah. the shacks and stuff. Exactly. Can you give everyone a bit of an insight to, as your fan yeah. perspective? Yeah, I mean, they really, they come here on Monday already. Um, they have their camping stuff ready. They, you know, if you go and walk between the fans, some guys they have jacuzzis on the top of their cars, man. It's, it's unbelievable what, what people can come up with. You, you can't even dream the kind of things that they actually do here. If you really, if you want some crazy ideas, don't Google it, just come to the Nürburgring just 24. And you, yeah, exactly. So also, this year is a new edition. We've got the merry-go-round. So, you know, some of the drivers, they tend to take the girlfriends up there at about midnight, you know, get some some kisses, midnight kisses. I don't think there's many hardcore fans that will watch an entire 24-hour race, yeah. but in your two-hour stint, how many sketchy moments did you have? There were quite a few, and that's, that's actually quite sad, is that they're still, on the north side, but so long, they can't have cameras everywhere, you know, it's, it's at the moment, it's still, you know, uh, logistically impossible. So we have the live onboards and stuff, but there are a few hairy moments. And that's like I said to you, you know, with, with Marcus that got away with that, nobody's seeing what happened to him yeah. at the race <laughs> last year. Sometimes you can sneak under the radar, you know, if you make a mistake. Kelvin, thank you so much for having Thanks us. Thanks a lot Honestly, for having it's me. Been so cool. It's great to see you again. To catch up and finally do a video. We're going to get involved with the outro now, okay? So if you want to watch another video, Click on Kelvin's face. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> if you want to subscribe, click on my face. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. And if you want to go to our WTF1 shop, click on my torso. <laughs> We're WTF1. This is Kelvin Mandelinda. See you See next, next time. time. <laughs> oh, I did the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>